guys. Okay guys, so we're back and I wanted to give an update on our pre-boil gravity reading. So remember, Beer Smith, our software, said we want to be at 1059. I'd say we are pretty much dead on 1059, which is just awesome. So I cooled this wart here, this sample, to 60 degrees and that's when you get your accurate gravity readings. You know, the gravity readings we were pulling earlier were uh, at about 160 degrees, so there's you know a lot of a it's a skewed scale when it's a warmer liquid you know it's going to be uh, a lot thinner basically so 1059 i think we nailed it so our numbers are dead on right now for this burst so i'm very happy with that and uh we're still in our boil still not at 60 minutes yet where uh, we had our first top so we'll come back when it's time for that okay guys so we've hit 30 minutes into our boil so we're at what people will call 60 minutes. We have 60 minutes remaining. That's when our first bittering hops go in. So here we're putting in Columbus. So we'll zoom in and show you what that looks like. Okay, in go the first 60 minutes hops here. Just one ounce of Columbus. And you see that usually kicks up our boil a little bit. Okay, next hops are 30 minutes, so we'll just come back then. Okay, 30 minutes left in the boil. Half ounce of Centennial going in now. So that's good. Our next hops, another half ounce of Centennial in 15 minutes. Uh, so now I'm going to show you some of the things we need to start sanitizing. All right. So 30 minutes left in the boil. Let's go ahead and start sanitizing some things here. Here's our carboy that we're going to be uh, transferring our wort into. So I always recommend star sand. So we squeeze this, get a bit to put in here. You don't need to fill it up all the way. Star sand works within a few seconds. So we pour this in and let it sit. And what I'll do before I transfer in is I'm going to end up sloshing it around and I'll splash it up and get all the sides covered. Then I'll run a little bit out through the spigot just to further sanitize that. We also, though, do need to sanitize, you know, just a little bit of water here in a plastic bucket. So we'll do this again. Oops. Same thing. So this is actually our oxygen stone here. So we do want to sanitize that and actually we'll stir up our water with it. Uh, we'll throw that in here. You know, after we boil, we gotta be real careful. So anything, excuse me, touches the beer has to be sanitized. So this is the hose we're gonna transfer uh, from the kettle into the fermenter. So this has to be submerged and you know flooded. So we put that under water and then we just push all the air out of it. Gurgles and that's done. And then also uh, funnel for, we may, we may not need this for pitching the yeast into the carboy, just in case, go ahead and sanitize that guy. And uh, that should be it for right now. Next top's going in about 15 minutes and uh, we'll come back then. Okay, time to add uh, the last half ounce of Centennial. There's 15 minutes left in the boil, so we just pour that in. And now in five more minutes, we've got another ounce of hops going in, and that's where we're also gonna put in our yeast nutrient and a little bit of Irish moss that acts as a clarifier. Okay guys, so 10 minutes left. Now what we're gonna add, here's our Irish moss, our clarifier. Uh, it's a quarter teaspoon, I believe. Um, this is our yeast nutrient. Now you usually should have enough free amino nitrogen if you're doing an all malt beer without a lot of adjuncts. Just to be safe, I like to add a quarter, like half of what they recommend. And then these are our 10 minute hops, uh, our Amarillo. So these all go in now. Okay, so that's flaring up a little bit, good. Um, we've got one more hop addition right at flame out at knockout in 10 minutes from now. In a couple minutes, what we're gonna do is go ahead and put our wort chiller in. Uh, so that can go ahead and sterilize in the boiling water so we don't have any infection as, uh, as we cool it using the tap water. So we'll show that going in here next. Okay guys, about seven or eight minutes left in the boil. I just wanted to pull up here and show you guys uh, what it's looking like now. You see a lot more hot material in here. This is not hot break, that's basically all bits of hops over there in the corner. Uh, now you also see how much our level is dropped here. Probably about two inches in the uh, 90 minute boil here. So. Things are still looking good. Got a good hard boil going. Uh, as you see here, we're at, uh, you know, right around 204 boiling temp at altitude. So 
going to put in our wort chiller here and uh, get this sterilized and then let that go for a few minutes and then right at flame out we're going to add our last hops. Okay guys, just a few minutes left in the boil. Got our wort chiller here, uh, I've already rinsed it off and everything so now we're going to go ahead and dunk it in and let it sit. Careful not to get your hoses you know, on the flame or your heat source. And the steam that comes up is going to go ahead and sanitize the neck of this as well. Uh, if you want to be extra cautionary, you can use, you know, like some star sand spray here. We can spray it down, and uh, that'll also suffice. So this is going to go a few more minutes, and then we'll hit knockout. We'll turn our heat off, and we'll add our last hops right at zero minutes. And then I'll carry this whole thing with the wort chiller inside over to our bathroom where we have the proper hookup, a garden hose hookup for our wort chiller. And uh, we'll start cooling this down as quickly as possible and uh, take it from there. All right, guys, we're about to shut off our heat source now. Got our final hops, our nuggets going in right here at Flame Out. Just want to show you guys what it's looking like in here. So we get a little bit of a kind of foam up there as you dump in fresh hops. You see our wort chiller here is submerged and it's uh, sanitizing the steam, sanitizing the neck. And uh, we're ready, so I'm going to pull this uh, bucket heater thing out of here and then we're gonna shut off this stove our other heat source and then we're going to uh, move this over to the bathroom where we're going to get this wort chiller rigged up to our uh, sink and uh, get cold groundwater going through there and chill this as quickly as possible okay so moved all the, the kettle over here into the bathroom uh, as you can see here We've got it rigged up to the sink, the wort chiller, nice tight seal with an adapter that looks like this. Uh, so cold water comes in from the tap, goes through the coils, picks up the heat. So hot water then comes back out here into the sink. So we just started off and we'll see right now where it's still at 204. And now we're flowing. Okay, so this is what our wort looks like right now. Those are all hot clumps on top. So our, uh, still pulling some really hot water out of here. We're down to 200 already, and uh, we'll start cranking now. And something you can do, once, this, once these coils get uh, a little bit cooler, you can actually grab this and kind of pick it up and just kind of swirl it around a little bit to just increase the heat transfer, speed it up a little bit. But we won't worry about that yet. Um, see here already in just 10 seconds it's come down 5 degrees or so so we'll just let this run and uh, we'll come back after we've made some pretty good progress on this okay guys so I was going to show you something you can do with your wort chiller to make it cool even quicker it's also starting the whirlpool effect where you know you start to it helps get all the particulates the hot bits bits of malt uh, in a cone in the center and this also really accelerates the uh, heat transfer and the cooling of the wort here. So in about 15 minutes, I've already got this down to under 90 degrees, which is great. You just gotta be real careful when you do this. So you're not, you don't drop anything into your wort because uh, it could be infected if you do that. As long as you're careful, this step's totally fine. A lot of people will freak out seeing me do this, but you know, this is something a lot of homebrewers do. I've been doing it for seven years like this never had a problem never had an infection so all I'm gonna do is get this down to about 67 degrees 68 and then I'll head back over into the kitchen and we'll uh, get set up to transfer into our carboy and uh, get our yeast ready and get oxygenated and all that good stuff